This is an extract from Wonder, Part 1, August. I know I'm not an ordinary ten-year-old kid. I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream, I ride my bike, I play ball, I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary, inside. But I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away, screaming in the playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. If I found a magic lamp and I could have one wish, I would wish that I had a normal face that no one would ever notice at all. I would wish that I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing that look away thing. Here's what I think. The only reason I'm not ordinary is that no one else sees me that way. But I'm kind of used to how I... Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy Gordon Edgley's sudden death came as a shock to everyone, not least himself. One moment he was in his study, seven words into the 25th sentence of the final chapter of his new book and the darkness reigned upon them, and the next he was dead. A tragic loss, his mind echoed numbly as he slipped away. The funeral was attended by family and acquaintances, but not many friends. Gordon hadn't been a well-liked figure in the publishing world. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighbourhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered the rightful property of some one or other of their daughters. My dear Mr. Bennet, said his lady to him one day, have you heard that Netherfield Park is let at last? Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. But it is, returned she, for Mrs. Long has just been here and she has told me all about it. Mr. Bennet made no answer. Do you want to know who has taken it? cried his wife impatiently. You want to tell me and I have no objection to hearing it. This was invitation enough. He woke in the morning and turned over in the blanket and looked back down the road through the trees the way they'd come in, time to see the marchers appear four abreast, dressed in clothing of every description, all wearing red scarves at their necks, red or orange, as close to red as they could find. He put his hand on the boy's head. Shh, he said. What is it, Papa? People on the road, keep your face down, don't look. No smoke from the dead fire, nothing to be seen of the cart. He wallowed into the ground and lay watching across his forearm, an army in tennis shoes tramping, carrying three-foot lengths of pipe with leather wrappings, lanyards at the wrist. Some of the pipes were threaded through with lengths of chain fitted at their ends with every manner of bludgeon. They clanked past, marching with a swaying gait like wind-up toys. The worst birthday. Not for the first time an argument had broken out over breakfast at number four, Pivot Drive. Mr. Vernon Dursley had been woken in the early hours of the morning by a loud hooting noise from his nephew Harry's room. Third time this week, he roared across the table. If you can't control that owl, it'll have to go. Harry tried yet again to explain. She's bored, he said. She's used to flying around outside. If I could just let her out at night. Do I look stupid? snarled Uncle Vernon. A bit of fried egg dangled from his bushy moustache. I know what'll happen if that owl's let out. He exchanged dark looks with his wife Petunia. Harry tried to argue back, but his words were drowned by a long, loud belch from the dursley son, Dudley. I want more bacon. There's more in the frying pan, sweetie, says Aunt Petunia, turning misty eyes on her massive son. We must feed you up while we've got the chance. I don't like the sound of that school food. Nonsense, Petunia. I never went hungry when I was at the smeltings, says Uncle Vernon heartily. 
totally cuts it off, don't you, son? Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Chapter 1 Dudley Demented The hottest day of the summer so far was drawing to a close, and a drowsy silence lay over the large, square houses of Privet Drive. Cars that were usually gleaming stood dusty in their drives, and lawns that were once emerald green lay parched and yellowing, for the use of house pipes had been banned due to drought. Deprived of their usual car washing and lawn mowing pursuits, the inhabitants of Privet Drive had retreated to the shade of their cool houses, windows thrown wide open in the hope of tempting the non-existent breeze. The only person left outdoors was a teenage boy who was lying flat on his back in a flowered bed in a flower bed outside number four. The morning burned so August hot, the marshes moist breath hung the oaks and pines with fog. The palmetto patches stood unusually quiet, except for the low, slow flap of the heron's wings lifting from the lagoon. And then Kaya, only six at the time, heard the screen door slap. Standing on the stool, she stopped scrubbing grits from the pot and lowered it into the basin of worn out suds. No sounds now but her own breathing. Who had left the shack? Not Ma. She never let the door slam. Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow, we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning, so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. We are the Hollow Men. We are the stuff men leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. Alas, our dried voices when we whisper together are quiet and meaningless, as wind in dry grass over rats' feet or broken grass in our dry cellar. This is the dead land. This is cactus land. Here the stone images are raised. Here they receive the supplication of a dead man's hand under the twinkling of a fading star. Is it like this? In death's other kingdom, walking alone at the hour when we are trembling with tenderness, lips that will kiss, form prayers to broken stone. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends, not with a bang, 